Hi everyone, I am here with a story tonight from our book, Miracles Do Happen. These are true stories that people send in. Tonight's short story is by Ruth Smith Meyer, and it is called Intervention from Heaven. What a sudden and unexpected twist to an ordinary day. Our two oldest were gone on a play date, and I had made use of their absence by cleaning the house. I shut off the vacuum and wondered where Beth had gone. She was an active child. From an early age, anything up was better than down. I had learned to keep a close eye on her. Must be in the kitchen, I thought, as I walked toward that door. My heart almost stopped at the sight. A chair had been pushed close to the cupboards, a few drawers pulled out to create a stepladder. My two-year-old daughter sat on the counter beside an overturned bowl, drinking straight from a bottle. Alarm bells went off in my head as I rushed toward her. I had stored a tiny vial of cough syrup on the top shelf of the cupboard. The doctor had given it to me to help me sleep. Within a half hour of taking it, the dose of one half teaspoon had made my legs so rubbery that night before that my husband had to help me get up the stairs. I wasn't sure that I was going to take it again since the effects were so strong. My heart pounded as I grabbed her with one arm and the bottle with the, uh, with the other. I ran to the bathroom thinking I'd try to make her bring up what had gone down, try to make her throw up. But by that time I got there, she lay motionless in my arms, her limbs flaccid. I turned toward the toilet and tried to find her gag reflex. She was too limp. Lord, I cried, what shall I do? We lived in a rural area with no ambulances. My husband was away with the car. I tried to think of a neighbor whom I might call to take us to the hospital. Even a hospital didn't seem so wise since the nearest one was 25 to 30 miles away. Calling the doctor seemed the best solution. The doctor at one call was one I didn't trust, but since he was the only one available, I told him that Beth had taken and that what she had taken and that she must have ingested at least half the bottle. That's quite a bit for one her size, he drawled. She will probably sleep for two or three days, but she will be all right. Is that all? I asked. Is there nothing else to do? Trying to make her vomit when she is unconscious wouldn't be good, he said. You're better just to let her sleep. If she doesn't wake up on the third day, call again. I don't like this doctor either. I was astounded <laughs> what all could go wrong in these days. What if she didn't wake up then? Would it be too late to do anything three days after? Would another doctor chide me for not taking her to the hospital right away? I lifted Beth's hand and it plopped back on the couch. I leaned over and kissed this little one whose life had been such a miracle after a very difficult pregnancy. They need to take her to the hospital and she needs to get some of that charcoal stuff to counteract this. I couldn't believe that just letting her sleep for three days was a good thing. I thought of a woman's prayer group I had recently joined. We had talked a few weeks earlier about miracles resulting from prayer. Several women talked about the laying on of hands. I had no experience in doing that and no one to ask to join in praying for her, but I felt the urgency of the situation, so I gathered my courage, reached for trust, and placed my hands on Beth's head. Lord, when you were on earth, you touched people and they were healed. You even raised some from the dead. You also told us that we would do even greater things in your name. So, Lord, I'm asking you to reverse the effects of the medicine Beth swallowed and let it have no lasting effects on her. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I was sure God heard my prayer, but not sure if the answer would come the way I hoped. I realized I was almost holding my breath. Breathe, I told myself, trying to slow my heart rate. Again, I tested her response. She was still as floppy as a wet noodle. 
I put a cover over her and tucked it around her. What do I do now? I sent my query heavenward. I heard an inner voice. Go get supper ready for the family. Loath to leave my baby, but not knowing what else to do, I reluctantly obeyed that nudge. As I peeled potatoes, I berated myself for not being more careful. I thought I'd put the medicine up high enough that no child could get it, but Beth was such a climber. The upturned bowl had given her the final advantage. She was full of surprise, but I hoped she would grow in wisdom. If this incident didn't do some irreparable harm. Again, I heard that inner voice. Leave it in my hands, you asked. Now leave it to me. Okay, God. I imagined leaving my burden, my guilt, and my fear at God's feet. It felt like a heavy bundle as I dropped it. I forced myself to sing, beginning with God is so good. My heart wasn't in it, but I kept singing. Gradually, my heart settled a bit, and the truth of those words began to reassure me. I struggled again to put my trust in God. Although it seemed like an hour since I had come into the kitchen, it couldn't have been ten minutes before I heard a rustle in the other room. I rushed to the door. Beth was sliding off the couch. Her usual eye-twinkling smile brightened her face as my happy little girl ran to me. Mommy! I hugged her close. Still in a state of shock, I repeated, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. She squirmed to get down. All was normal as she ran around playing. I could hardly believe it. I watched carefully for all signs, but she, <laughs> but she chattered and laughed, just as our Mary Beth normally did. When I told my husband and older children at supper what had happened, they too were awed at the intervention from heaven. Fifty years later, Beth is active in her church, a dedicated manager in a social work office, and an encouragement to all as she brings her own brand of sunshine into everything she does. And I never cease to give thanks to a God who is good. Amen.